My name is Dintasri. I work for BBC World Service. We are one of the 27 languages and I work for Burmese Service. And needless to say, this is Burma. And when you see Burma, you try to imagine to, uh, the first image that likely to come up is probably pagodas um, or possibly a woman who is uh, now one of the most charismatic and respected leaders, Aung San Suu Kyi. Aung San Suu Kyi, she was under house arrest for many, many years, in total 15 years. But when she was released in 2010, the first thing that's really struck the people is how well informed she was. She listened to BBC every day for six hours at least. Radio is a critical information point for millions. And the BBC World Service, we all know that it maintains its reputation, its global reputation and reach. BBC Burmese service reach, the weekly reach, is approximately 8.5 million. That is a very conservative figure. So is radio just for news? No, radio is not just for news. Radio has played a critical role in humanitarian crisis. The BBC has been providing lifeline programming for 80 years. In 2008, when Cyclone Nargis hit lower part of Burma, the Delta region, we knew that our listeners, who also were victims of the cyclone, we knew that they would be desperate for information, information to help them cope with the disaster. And BBC Media Action and the Burmese service, we partnered to deliver lifeline programming. We produced altogether 135 episodes over nine months. And each episode was broadcast daily. We worked closely with experts in aid agency to present practical information. The audiences, they could use these practical information in the absence of aid. For example, what we've done is that uh, how to create seed banks in communities or a simple information like how to build fly traps to improve hygiene. And later when aid agency were able to access to the victims, you know, more victims, then we provided information on how to use supplies that were distributed. These information were very important because most communities, they were not familiar with these supplies, these materials that supplied. So, so, you know, what we discover, or we all know that radio is immediate. You know, after this sudden onset of emergency, we can reach people more quickly than rescue services can. And it is wide reaching. It can deliver factual humanitarian information from expert sources to millions and at once we can deliver. And, and also it reached to areas otherwise cut off from humanitarian aid. It could be due to conflict or it could be due to uh, simple physical, physical barriers. And it is portable radio. You don't need electricity. You know? And after the cyclone Argus, the demand for radio gone up hugely in Burma. Everybody was asking for, can you send us radio? Can you send us radio? And for those who are traumatized, traumatized population, radio can serve as psychological support. It, it is also entertaining. Aung San Suu Kyi herself, when she came out from house arrest, she was telling us how she listened to, how she enjoyed BBC music program and arts programs. And radio is accessible. You know, it can, we can tailor to vulnerable groups and also we can, it can meet the needs of literacy <coughs> society. And also it is private, radio is private. Uh, in Burma, until recently, listening to BBC is banned. So people listen with, uh, with their headphones so that nobody could detect what they're listening. But it's also, it is public. In rural areas, and especially in refugee camps, people would gather around to listen radio. And also, by listening together, it promotes uh, debate and discussions on the issue raised. 
And one of the award-winning programs uh, Push to Service did was uh, this lifeline health message during the Afghan war in 80s. Um, and it, it also interactive. So what I like to say is whether you are an aid worker or whether you are a technologi uh, technology expert, you know, radio is very much underused, underutilized. So we are actively looking ways that we can join forces. Thank you. Thank you.